So Ken, first of all, welcome, and thank you thank so you. much for being here. Uh, Ken, I think we've known each other over 15 years. We've been talking about the challenges of clinical trials for at least that long, and they don't get less challenging. And wanted to get your thoughts on what makes them so challenging. We, we have to have them, there's no doubt, to establish safety. It's such a great question, and I have to say it's tied to so many things. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is the science itself, right? Science mm -hmm. has gotten mm -hmm. so complex. We're now looking at studying chronic illnesses that are very hard to evaluate. It's very hard to demonstrate an outcome or an endpoint. Mm -hmm. Difficult to demonstrate safety and efficacy, so that's part of it. You have a lot of regulatory pressures now. You have to demonstrate safety early on in a drug. There's pressure, strategic pressure on companies mm -hmm. to collect more data early on so that they can avoid moving into more costly later stage research. Even phase four studies have moved from observational in nature mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to uh, more robust clinical trials. And all of this is within the framework of having to demonstrate more than safety and efficacy. Now you have to show comparative effectiveness as well. So you have the science of clinical research and then you also have the operational complexity, which has also added tremendous uh, logistical challenges. In fact, mm -hmm. much of the scientific mm -hmm. practices that have lent themselves to conducting trials in other parts of the world, that have resulted in engaging larger numbers of sites to enroll smaller numbers of patients, all of that creates uh, more dispersed trials globally. It's harder to find sites to conduct our studies. It's hard to predict their performance. So we really have this confluence of hyper complexity on every level, the science level as well as the operating level. And that's what companies are really struggling with. And mm. it translates into real challenges for the site in executing the trial and ultimately in recruiting the patients and keeping them in our studies. We're at the worst level ever mm. in terms of recruitment and retention uh, today. And why is that? Why is it at the worst levels ever? Well, the last 10 years, we've seen a huge shift in what we expect from our patients. The typical patient today will be in a trial for 11 months. They'll have to uh, undergo 170 procedures on average. They may not even qualify for the trial. The typical study has about 40 eligibility criteria. And we expect the patient today to record more information themselves so there's more sort of self-reported accountability. So we're just putting our patients through such uh, incredible obligation and requirement. Many of these protocols are also very, very difficult to execute over time. And as a result, study volunteers have trouble staying in the program, mm. even if they qualify. How is the industry responding to that? Are there new tools, technology, support, guidance to help support patients so that we keep them? Well, that is, in fact, one of the things we're going to talk about today. Because we've known about protocol complexity more the scientific complexity, but increasingly the operating complexity for 10 years. But it's high-hanging fruit, right? For many years, mm -hmm. the focus was on speed and cost savings. Mm -hmm. And yep. so many of the technologies that were introduced were really designed to focus on a specific point solution. Let's collect data electronically and we can clean it faster. Let's use a master service agreement so we can get the site started faster. Mm -hmm. Let's use social media to reach out to patients mm -hmm. and bring them into our trials. But we haven't really acknowledged that at the heart of everything, the fundamental driver of the challenge and of improvement rests with the protocol. In our session today, I'm going to sort of begin with an articulation of just how rampant complexity has become. And then I'm going to show with data that the Tufts Center has gathered the relationship. There's a very positive correlation between complexity and performance. The more complex, the poorer the performance of the trial, and the lower the recruitment and retention. And then we're going to open it up to panel members who are going to talk about specific approaches, some that are more permanent, structural changes in the way that they develop protocols today, and that's very exciting. There are new technologies that are used to benchmark protocol design, so mm -hmm. you can see how much more complex your study might be. So you'll see some of those approaches and ways of testing the feasibility of the protocol to simplify it. And so what do you hope the attendees will go back to their offices and do once they have this information? Yeah. What could the industry do? How can we make that less complicated? In the ideal world, every attendee would leave with a clear sense of some of the approaches, some of the strategies that companies are implementing to really optimize protocol design. At a minimum, it would be nice to see people walk out of this room and recognize that science is no longer the 
primary driver of protocol design, but it has to strike a balance, right? The feasibility of the protocol and the scientific objectives have to, uh, in some ways, better align. And so I hope that through our discussion, even if there's an acknowledgement that we can do better to match our protocol with our objectives and to get rid of the excess, that that will simplify design and I believe ultimately improve performance. Very nice. These are really wonderful goals that you'll be outlining for the industry. Any other thoughts you can share with our viewers on what can we do to make clinical trials less complicated? What, what other thoughts do you have there? Yeah, well, it's a big question, a big question. <laughs> and not an easy answer. For a long time, mm -hmm. we've looked at uh, so many approaches. Mm -hmm. We think that if companies rethink where they conduct their trials, do we need to do our pivotal studies in 80 countries? That will help. So to mm -hmm. actually contract or scale back on where we conduct our studies will be a, a key. We haven't done a good job as an industry in really partnering with sites. And so the site is usually sort of treated as a commodity service on the periphery. And there is so much that could be done to engage and even treat the site like we do many CROs in more of an integrated preferred mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. That will go very far in affecting real cycle time improvement and higher levels of efficiency. Mm -hmm. And then of course partnering with patients. It's an area mm -hmm. we really haven't done a good job with, but mm -hmm. uh, as an industry, we still deal with distrust. We still have issues okay. with transparency and disclosure. There are huge opportunities for this industry to be far more visible collectively in shaping public awareness and public literacy about the importance of clinical research. That's very encouraging to hear. Uh, Ken, thank you so much. Ken Getz. My pleasure. And thank you.